This is the XRP one month overview reading for October 2022. Uh, it's currently uh, September 16th, 2022, 808 p.m. Eastern Time. The overall theme and behavior for XRP, uh, there's a sharp, sharp drop. Um, it's a so we, we came out of like a, a pretty s strong rally uh, it looks like in September had a high at the end of the month right and then there's a low here <clears throat> it's, it speaks of an important low the same low or a lower low um, than what we had here um, early in the month of September so um, this is a big very bearish card to get as a theme card it is crossed with valor card which is a little bit more of a bullish it's a bullish card but it's not like a super bullish card it's bumping along resistance um, you break through resistance, bump along more resistance. You may not break through resistance, you may break through resistance, you know, but the majority of the behavior is bumping along resistance at the upper end of a range. Um, looks like we have a decline, no, uh, like a strong decline at the end of the month. Um, and. I'm advised to buy protection. Interesting. So there's going to be a little bit of a rally, uh, at least in the beginning of November for XRP, and I'm advised to buy protection then as well. So um, <laughs> interesting. A lot of trading opportunity here, guys. Um, the behavior around the high. So this is this is a notable high. Uh, the month's high is a significant high in that. Um, it provides a really good opportunity. If you look at a one-year chart, it'll stand out as a really good opportunity, um, probably to open up a position. Um, yeah, likely to open up a position. You, it may be good to, to sell as well, but uh, a lot of the time, the full card's a good opportunity to open up a position. The behavior around the uh, month's low, or two, it looks like there's two major lows. Um, <clears throat> The behavior is volatility, uh, and there's a sharp dip that stands out on a one-month chart within that period of volatility. Um, and it looks like there's a pretty notable rally out of both of the month's lows. On the first, we have a decline to and through support level. We break through that support level, and then we do a reversal below it, come back and reuse it as support. On the second, there's even in the face of negative headwinds, there's a big move to the upside. We may even break through resistance. Um, and, and that is most likely, that is the most likely place that we would see a month's high. Um, <clears throat> on the third, we have a reversal. Oh, and there's a swing trade opportunity on the second involving uh, an unexpected uh, move to the upside. On the third, we have uh, two trade opportunities, so likely to close a position, or maybe there's a day trade there, um, but there's a reversal that will stand out on a one month chart there. Um, and the swing trade opportunities, one of them involves a fast sudden move to the upside on a one day chart, the other one involves um, the being range bound at the up, uh, being range bound, I would say probably the upper end of the range. On the fourth, we have uh, we have a prominent low for the month. Uh, this is the first prominent low for the month. Um, and we have an agreement between two leaders or a merger of some kind that in, in interferes um, with, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with XRP. The swing trade opportunity there uh, involves uh, multiple failed attempts to break through key resistance. And it looks like we go into a crest. This wouldn't be necessarily a high here on the fifth, but it looks like we go into a crest Excuse me. So the low is either on the fourth. There's a low. There's a low, not the low, but there's a low either on the fourth or the fifth. Um, possibly like a lower low on the fifth, but um, we have a, a sharp decline um, in the midst of some bearish price swings. There's a sharp decline. It'll stand out um, on a one month chart. Uh, and it looks like the high, we may we may meet a, a high before this drop. It's possible there's price swings in there, but I have a high somewhere between like the uh, fifth and the seventh as well. Or I shouldn't say high, but like a, a prominent crest, a major crest. So we go from the high, a month's high on the second to a prominent trough on the fourth, fifth, and a, a prominent crest on the fifth or the seventh. Um, on the sixth, we attempt to establish su uh, support. It looks like at the upper end of a uh, range, um, we attempt to establish support um, and 
Prince of so Princess of Swords price level is coming up as the daily highs on the second, the fifth, and the sixth. Um, so possibly the same price level in there. Um, and it, it offers an opportunity um, to position oneself in both directions. So um, on a one month scale, likely the, the, that price level is good to notate because like in the next month we have, uh, at least at the beginning of the month, we have a rally. So you position yourself for that um, to take some money on the downside and some money on the upside. I don't know if you can short XRP. If you can, somebody comment and let me know how. I don't have time to go look, oh my God. Uh, on uh, on the seventh, <clears throat> yeah. So there's a prominent, there's like a bit, there's a notable rally <clears throat> to reach the high on the sixth, seventh, or eighth, somewhere in there. Um, there's a notable rally that'll stand out uh, significantly on a one-day chart and it'll likely stand out on a, a one-month chart. On the seventh, we we uh, fall from a uh, support to another support and then we rotate sideways along that support. Um, on the 8th, we have a, a decline that increases with increases with momentum moving into um, into the uh, uh, day, into the close. Um, we also have a, a correlation there on the 8th with a with the tower card. Um, so I would say there's there's going to be a significant drop there on the 8th or, or off of the 7th, I should say, off of the high that wherever that high is on the 5th, 6th. And I really don't think it's going to be higher than the second, the high that we see on the 2nd. It won't like it's it's going to be likely the same high and so um from that when we meet that level again there's going to be a sharp drop over like the seventh eighth um se the seventh and eighth and then on the ninth we have a um move higher through a prominent uh, resistance level on a one month chart um we stay above it briefly and then we break back down through the same price level um looks like there's a cash out opportunity at a low there towards the end of the day on the ninth on the 10th, there's a, a day's high early in the day, and it's also a prominent crust for the month, another prominent crust that will stand out there. Um, there's ro sideways rotation along a support level. We rise to meet the, the closest resistance level, and then we, we break back down to that, same, to that uh, support level that we're rotating. Well, we don't break down to it. We, we fall back down to that, um, to that support level. It's like being bound between the, the two closest ranges of support and a resistance. Um, on the seventh, and then and then there's a prominent crest there. It'll stand out on the one month chart. On the ten, on the eleventh, we have a decline. We revisit uh, past pro past problems. What I'm finding with the hermit card is it's a flight to safety. Usually, we break through a significant price level that we had broken through once before uh, recently. It could be like where the moon was. Picking up on it being around where the moon is, the moon card on the fifth, somewhere around there. Um, you have to give this, the sequence of events is, is on point. Sometimes these monthlies, you have to like give it a little sway room, but the sequence of events is 100%. Um, and it's probably 100% on, on the dailies as well. So, I mean, on the, uh, on the one month as well. So. On the twelfth, uh, we have a sideways S decline. So between a support and a resistance level, there's a decline from the resistance to the support. We reverse, go back to the resistance, and then reverse and go back to the support. It's not necessarily horizontal. It could be like to like slanted downward. Most likely, it's slanted downward um, based on the, the what I see in the, the days, the preceding days or the days coming. Um, there's a prominent trough on the or early on the 12th, um, and it looks like a low for 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 the day of the 12th, early in the 12th. On the 13th, we have bumping up against uh, resistance. Uh, it's cro it's crossed uh, with the Ballard card, so there's a rally that that begins somewhere around this low here. Matter of fact, so. Uh, we bump up against resistance. Matter of fact, so it looks like the rally starts there. We're gonna go come back. We're gonna go lower before we go higher. But that's kind of like where we start to see like a, a bit of a bullish sentiment kick in, um, on the 13th, and we're bumping up against resistance. On the 14th, I'm advised to be, uh, to, uh, to cash cash in on some uh, positions, or if there's a short position to cash in. Um, there's a there's a month's low or a prominent trough there uh, early on the 14th it looks like 
Um, this this is likely a very like a, a lower low. Um, it's at least the same low as the earlier one that we had around the fifth, but it could be a lower low. Um, and and I'm advised to heed, <laughs> not feed, heed advice that I that I'm probably not going to want to listen to. I better listen to it. Something spoken on the news, probably, or you know, I mean, it could come from anywhere. Um, on the fifteenth. Um, a, a similar energy going on. We have on the 14th, 15th, we have um, the, the Princess of Discs and the Ace of Discs on the 15th. They're very, very similar en en energies. The Ace of Discs, a lot of the time, there's a, there's a decline uh, to meet support. Sometimes it's a new support at a higher level, but usually it's a decline to meet a, a new support level, a significant one. Um, there's there's a swing trade opportunity there, too. So this is a pretty, pr pretty cash, uh, like, a pretty... Um, lucrative opportunity here um, so on the 14th if we if we're steep if we're if we, we open at, at a high on the 14th uh, what I would do is buy um, buy some Buy some, create a short position if I can. I don't know if you can do that with XRP, like I said. Um, and then if we open at a low, because there's a little bit of crisscrossing information going on there. Uh, if we open at a, at a like significant low for the month on the 14th, um, then I would say I'd open up a long position. Um, and this, what, either way that I'd go, I'd want to sell that position on the 15th. That's what's going on there. Um, we have the completion of a rally. Uh, on both days around a high something to do with the male ruler of nations um, and this two swing trade opportunities both involve a multiple failed attempts to break through key resistance on the 16th we have notable move to the upside that'll stand out on a one month chart uh, on the 17th, there's an important resistance level that's highlighted. I, I want to take note of that price level. It looks like the 17th to 18th is the resistance. There's a there's a big move. There's a big move um, early on the 18th. So it may actually be a new resistance level. It looks like we have another um, prominent crest for the month that's, that uh, takes place on the 19th in the midst of some volatility. Um, Again, that price level on the 19th uh, offers an opportunity to position oneself in both directions if that's possible, and that that would be with like a time frame out or time horizon out in November for the long position. Um, on the 20th, oh, and there's a swing trade opportunity involving an, uh, an unexpected or un improbable move to the upside um, on a one-day chart. It'll stand out, <clears throat> and that's on the 19th. On the 20th, we have a rally along a diagonal trend line. Uh, we uh, break through horizontal resistance, meet a second resistance, and then fall back to somewhere between those two price levels. Um, and that looks like it looks like that rally is actually more so probably on the nineteenth. There, the there, there's a prominent crest there between like the nineteenth and the twentieth, but then we start to see some real negative behavior go on. Um, there's deception around uh, around the end of the day on the twentieth. Um, in the midst of a move, like we, we will be at a low uh, at the end of the day, a day's low at the end of the day. Um, and then there's deception. There's like a deceptive move higher at the beginning of the day on the 21st or at the end of the day on the 20th. Um, a big move coming. So we have a U-shaped dip on the 21st. Something that was hidden may come to light then. Um, and then towards the end of the day on the 21st into the 22nd, we have a notable move lower. Um, this is a big, big move to the downside. Um, there's correlation on both the 20th and the 21st uh, and 22nd. Well, not a correlation, but there's a, there's a, and there's an impression on the 21st, and then there's another correlation on the 22nd, all to the tower card. Um, so notable, notable drop off of that crest or high that we should see there uh, probably at the end of the day or towards the mid-afternoon on the 19th. Um, and it looks like towards the very end of the day on the 22nd at a low is where I'm going to want to uh, close out of any short positions or open up a long position. Um, it looks like... It's either the end of the day on the 22nd or early in the day on the 23rd. We break through multiple support levels on the 23rd. Um, and the swing trade opportunities 
Um, on the 22nd, there's two trade opportunities, one involving uh, the, a, a range we're bound in, within a range, um, probably at the lower end of a range, and then there's a fast sudden move higher involved in the other swing trade. On the 23rd, the swing trade it, it involves multiple failed attempts to break through key resistance. I think probably what happens is we have uh, like a pop higher overnight on the 23rd into the 23rd um, and then we fall again uh, on the 24th we have a notable move higher here it'll stand out on a one month chart uh, sometimes this is like a point where we create a, a new support level on the 25th there's two swing trade opportunities one of those is to cash in early in the day and there's two swing trade opportunities i don't know which one of them for, based on this information it's hard to determine if it's the first one or the second one but uh one of the trade opportunities is oppression uh it's more bound by a range hard to say which direction um probably the upper end of a range uh and that's on a one day chart and then uh the other swing trade opportunity there on the 25th involves a fast sudden move to the upside again on a one day chart but there's a cash in opportunity there uh, towards the beginning of the day on the 25th uh, and then we have on the 26th, uh, we have rotation along a, a key support level on the one month chart, uh, increasing with bullish sentiment as we move forward into the day. Looks like there's another prominent trough or, or actually this, these are probably the month's lows. So um, like the end of the 22nd or, the, or on the 23rd is one. And then probably again, we'll see a month's low on the 26th, 27th. So that cash in opportunity early on the 25th is likely to close a long position for a swing trade that we opened um, at the low on the 22nd, 23rd. Um, on the 27th, more sideways rotation. Oh, excuse me. And we have a sharp, sharp drop. Excuse me, I almost missed that. We have a sharp, sharp drop on the 26th. Um, so sideways rotation um, with a sharp drop in there probably hard to say early in the day or whatnot, probably towards the end of the day because we have a low towards the end of the day for the month. Um, probably our second low for the month, like maybe the same price level um, or maybe slightly above it, uh, the first one. And on the 27th, um, we have uh, bumping along resistance highlighted. There's rotation along support and the fast sudden move to the upside marking the end of a period of rotation along support. Um, on the 28th, we have a prominent crest. It's probably not a high, but a, a crest that stands out um, on a one month chart there on the 28th. Uh, it'll be a brief high. We fall from there um, through support or through multiple support levels. Um, on the 29th, we have a move higher through resistance. We stay above it briefly and then we break back down through the same price level with a full retracement shortly thereafter. On the 30th, we have sideways bullish price swings. Excuse me, not sideways, but bullish price swings. Um, However, there's also another correlation there to a sharp uh, tower drop. So that could take place um, on the 30th or the 31st, a sharp, sharp drop. Um, that's on a one month, one month scale. On the 31st, we have three uh, pokes through the same price level followed by a sharp drop after that third poke. And then again, like I said, uh, there's a rally in er, at least in early October offering an opportunity to open up a short position or to close out of long positions. I don't know if you can make place, if you can make a short trade on XRP, but if you can, please somebody comment in the, in the comments so I know I'd love to be able to do that. Um, with that said, long term, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on XRP, my friends. Um, that's XRP for October 2022. Let me know what you think by hitting that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember that rule of karma, my friends. 5% forward, 5% backwards. Make sure you spend it all out of love. And I'll see you on the next one.